Cardinal Supic has done it again. He told one of his priests, don't pray the St. Michael prayer after Mass. No way. With everything going on in the Catholic Church today, all the liturgical abuse, all the sexual scandals, the financial scandals, and the confusion about church closings and mandatory this and that and masks. What we really need to put all of our pressure and attention on is a priest saying the St. Michael prayer out loud after mass. Isn't that correct, your eminence, Cardinal Supich? And don't pray the Hail Mary also. Father Z broke this story. I'm going to show the video of the priest explaining to his congregation. We're not going to say, we're not going to pray the St. Michael prayer or the Hail Mary anymore. I'm telling you what, folks. You, you do things like this. And Jesus, the King of Kings, he's the judge of the living and the dead. Or as we used to say in the old days, the quick and the dead. I like that. I mean... Do you, th how do you sleep at night? I mean, you're, tr you're, you say you're serving the king, but when it comes to the greatest saint ever, the queen of saints, the Immaculate Conception, you're saying, don't do that. And then St. Michael, even in the Confidior, we, we invoke, we ask St. Mary of a Virgin, St. Michael, the Archangel to pray for us. So Cardinal Supich is up. You know, I did a show last week on Cardinal Supich in Chicago on this. Lori Lightfoot, the same-sex attracted Democrat pro-choice mayor, went and received communion. Yes, she did. Right in front of Cardinal Supich. There it is. A lot of people are saying since then, oh, Marshall, didn't you see that one priest was flustered he didn't know what to do um he feels bad about it look the democrat mayor of new york doesn't show up in any church without first their team calling their team it could be if, if a democrat politician like the mayor of chicago is going to go to a baptist church her team calls the team at the baptist church and talks to him hey is there going to be anything that's going to be bad any weird photos anything that could be uncomfortable it's going to hurt my election, hurt my popularity. That always happens. We're talking about a funeral for a police officer shot down. Already a stressful situation. You're trying to say that the mayor of New York City randomly showed up at the Catholic Mass without the cardinal and the local diocese knowing and went up and received communion. It's feasible, doubtful. Meanwhile, you know, did Cardinal Supich do anything about this? No, he did exactly Zach diddly squat nothing. But as you're going to see in this video, he did intervene and ask a priest to stop praying the St. Michael prayer and the Hail Mary prayer. Uh, let's pray, and then I'll run that clip. All right, that's what we're going to do. All right, we'll pray the Our Father. Ain't nobody going to stop us praying the Our Father. Oremus. Nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in Celi, sanctificetur nomen tuum, advenia regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et imite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, se libera nosa malo. Amen. Nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. If you want to learn Catholic prayers in Latin, you can do all that for free right here on my YouTube channel. Make sure you like this video and also subscribe to this YouTube channel. You hit the, well, hit the thumbs up and then hit the subscribe and hit the bell. You'll be notified when we go live. You can also look at the catalog of the other 700 shows that are up here on YouTube. Might be closer to 800 now. Got to check. Um, and please share this video on Facebook, Twitter. Facebook always seems to be the best. What else do we want to say? Oh, there's a poll. 
I'm taking a poll during the show right now. After the show, the poll will be dead. But here's what I'm asking you, and here are the results so far. I can't quite see them right now because I'm live, but you can see them if you're on the live. Does your priest pray Leonine prayers, that is the three Hail Marys, the Hail Holy Queen, the St. Michael prayer, and the extra colic, after low mass? If you go to traditional Latin mass, low mass, this happens every single time at after mass is over. Um, and this is where this custom actually comes from. Today, I'm going to go through the history of Pope Leo XIII, why he instituted these prayers after mass. That's why they're called the Leonine prayers after Pope Leo XIII. Um, how Pius XI and XII um, changed their importance for the conversion of Russia. And then we'll see how Pope Paul VI abolished them during Vatican II. Are you surprised that the Pope during Vatican II abolished prayers to protect the church from Satan's infiltration, from Satan's interference in the church? That's why they were added at the end of Low Mass. And then, oh, during Vatican II, we don't need that anymore. Okay, so there's the poll. Please vote. As you can see, 59% say yes, their priest does, and 41% says no, their priest does not. Let's run the clip. Uh, this comes from Father Z, Father Zolstorf. I saw him break this story, uh, and he posted the video, and I'm going to post the video. You'll notice that, let me go back on the screen here. You'll notice that, there it is. Uh, it's Novus Ordo. Um, you'll notice that, I'm going to put this over here, uh, two other things. The chalice and the patent are uncovered. That's over there in the uh, your bottom left corner. According to tra Catholic tradition, and this is in the Eastern Church and in the Western Church, uh, sacred chalices are, in fact, sacred. Lay people are not allowed to touch them. You must be at least a subdeacon, a deacon, a priest, or a bishop. Otherwise, you have to wear gloves, usually white gloves. You may see someone in the sacristy wearing white gloves to touch a chalice and a patent. The patent is the plate. The chalice is the cup. Um, because you have to be celibate to touch the sacred vessels. St. Jerome in the uh, late 300s is discussing this as a common universal understanding amongst Catholics that lay people cannot touch the sacred vessels. Of course, he believes they can't touch the actual Eucharist or communion with the hands. That's out, totally out of the question. Um, so that should be veiled. No offense to Father here, but I'm just I'm trying to use this as an opportunity to teach some Catholic tradition. I'm not making it up. It's just historical fact. And then you'll notice the three Star Trek chairs in the background here. Um, what they thought was really cool is um, to remove the tabernacle and to remove crucifix and to remove the reredos and remove everything sacred. Uh, get rid of that. Uh, sell it to the Episcopalians or the Anglicans or throw it in the dumpster or put it in the basement. And then they put in groovy um, chairs. Uh, three chairs right there. So instead of the tabernacle being front and center, the priest is. You know, you've always, according to post Vatican II liturgics, you got to be looking that priest in the face. You got to be actively participating all the time. So already, um, not thrilled here, but I do appreciate that the priest is actually trying to uh, add some devotional life after Mass. So here, let's hear what he says. Here we go. I'm going to hit play. And Hello, respect. Okay. Following the directive of Cardinal Supish, we want to remind everyone that the prayer uh, to St. Michael is not to be said publicly following Mass. This devotional prayer may be recited privately while being respectful of others in the church. Okay. Um, and also, just you realize that I like to say Hail Mary at the end of the Eucharist, but now I was told to, to sing uh, instead of the Hail Mary. What is the thing? I'm going to pause here. Well, there's a little bit more because he talks about obedience. Um, so he he can't say that he uh, can't lead the St. Michael prayer after Mass. He can't even do the Hail Mary. He's been told to sing. So what Cardinal Supich has effectively told this priest is, you the Hail Mary 
which is the angelic salutation of St. Gabriel to the Virgin Mary in Luke chapter 1. You can't do that, but if you want to get some cheese ball, modernist, heretical, Jesuit celebration hymn out of a cheese ball hymnal and do that after Mass and sing it, you could probably even dance up and down the aisles. You could probably get on a hoverboard. You could bring your dog in, I bet, and do the recessional. That's going to be probably legit. But, you know, if you pray a Hail Mary, my goodness sakes. Now, Father goes on here and talks, gives a little uh, homily on obedience to Cardinal Supich, and I want to play that too. Here we go. I'm going to back it up a little bit for context. Here we are. The Eucharist, well, now I was told to, to sing uh, instead of the Hail Mary. What is the thing? Uh, as a priest, I have to obey. Huh? And if I obey, I should do this at peace. And my heart is at peace. Okay? I was reflecting on this. Now I say, okay, that's okay. If the Cardinal Supich says this, I have to, to do it. All right? But at peace. Okay? Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. All right. And then also just historically, the reason the priest kissed the altar is the altar signifies Christ, but also there are relics of the saint right in the middle um, of the altar there. Uh, again, if you're coming in late, the veil and patent should be veiled. Of course, the missile should be on a stand off to the side. And, and uh, I already talked about the three Star Trek chairs. Okay. So there it is. Um, I have to obey Cardinal Supich. That's how it goes. And, um, oops, that's the wrong video. Here it is. That was yesterday's video. Yeah, this is this is the um, the landscape of the Catholic Church in 2021. And uh, I'm going to ask you all right now, leave a comment below or in the live chat. Are you happy with this climate? Do you like this? Is this is this a good situation? What are the Leonine prayers and why has it been that priests have said the Leonine prayers for over 100 years in traditional circles? Again, the Leonine prayers, here's how it happens if you attend a low mass in the traditional Latin mass. Um, the priest descends from the altar once he gives the blessing and reads the last gospel, which is always John's, not always, uh, usually John's uh, prologue. He says Hail Mary, the Hail Mary three times. He says the Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope, that prayer. Then he says, pray for us, O Most Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Then he prays the collect, let us pray, O God, our refuge and our strength. Then he prays the St. Michael prayer. And then he says, Most Sacred Heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most Sacred Heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most Sacred Heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. The origin not exactly as it is, as I just said, but the origin of this goes to Pope Leo XIII, who's one of my most favorite saints. He's not canonized, and it's crazy. They just announced that they're going to beatify and move canonization for John Paul I, not to John Paul I, who was Pope for 30-something days, 33 days. Um, yeah, Leo XIII was a, was a great Pope. I've done a lot, a lot of videos on Leo XIII. And um, Leo the Thirteenth had an apparition, a vision. Something happened in which he realized that Rome was under siege from the demons. The demons were invading Rome, the Eternal City, in the late 1800s. And I catalog and explain and footnote what exactly the context was and what Leo the Thirteenth saw in the late 1800s. It's actually the fifth, is it the fifth chapter? Yeah, it's the fifth chapter in my book, Infiltration. And just to give you the abbreviated version, he, and I give the sources, there's different accounts, various accounts on it. But basically, he sees demons descending on the eternal city, according to his secretary, 
Leo the Thirteenth secretary. And so after this happened, and there's other versions where he was in mass and he died and came back to life or he passed out. There's all kinds of things. But something did happen during his pontificate. And after that experience, whatever it was, he composed the St. Michael prayer, a short version and a long version. The short version is the one usually said after Mass. And he decreed for these prayers to be said at the end of every low Mass. He also composed the longer version and asked all bishops and priests throughout the world to use it. That was beginning in 1890. So Pope Leo XIII, and here's a quote by Pope Leo XIII. He says, he uses the word conspiracies. So you may, be, you may be interested to hear this quote. He said, by way of conspiracies, corruptions, and violence, it, it has finally come to dominate Italy and even Rome. And he was talking about a demonic infestation. Infestation. It might be the, I'm actually kind of thinking maybe the sequel to my book, Infiltration, is going to be called Infestation. What do you think about that? Leave a comment if you like it or don't like it. But Leo XIII says, by way of conspiracies, corruptions, and violence, it has finally com come to dominate Italy and even Rome. He's writing this in the 18, late 1880s. So that's the Leonine prayers. Uh, Pope, o Pope Pius XI and Pope Pius XII said, you know what? Russia is such a problem on planet Earth right now. This flows out of the Our Lady of Fatima visions and messages. We're going to say that the Leonine prayers at the end of Low Mass, we're now praying those for the conversion of Russia. And then in 1964, Pope, Pi Pope Paul VI abolished these prayers and said, do not pray them. So in a way, Cardinal Supich is just following Paul VI and all the popes since then who have said, don't do it. It's true that Leo the Thirteenth and Pius the Tenth and Bennett the Fifteenth and Pius the Eleventh and Pius the Twelfth and John the Twenty Third even were doing these prayers at the end of Low Mass, but Paul the Sixth says don't do it. And if you're a traditionalist, traditional Catholic, you know the problems begin. Some of the problems begin under Pius the Twelfth. Well, as I say, in infiltration. Problems begin in early 1800s, 1800s, not 1900s, early 1800s. But you really see the weeds growing up tall um, in the 50s under Pius XII, partly, and then John the 23rd, and then just full bloom hay fever, Paul the Six. In my opinion, I'm not a member of the Magisterium. I'm just a dad on a webcam talking to you today. By the way, if you want to see a timeline of all the liturgical changes, like the abolishing of the Leonine prayers, the three Hail Marys and the St. Michael, uh, there's an appendix in the back of infiltration. And it goes basically pretty much year by year and shows when, how, and who suppressed liturgical things. For example, on page 288, 1964, the Leonine prayers are suppressed by the instruction of Paul VI, inter ecumenici. So there it is. So we live in a time in which the mayor, Protestant, same-sex attracted, Democrat, pro-choice mayor, not even a Catholic, can receive communion in the presence of Cardinal Supich. And a public recitation of the St. Michael prayer or the Hail Mary has to be banned. Now, regarding uh, Cardinal Supich, you may remember when Archbishop Vigano came out with his 11-page testimony. This was the very first one that was released in 2018. Can you believe it was that long ago? And Archbishop Vigano says that Cardinal Supich and Cardinal Tobin, Big Tobin, in Newark, New Jersey, that they, that their appointments as cardinals was orchestrated by none other than Theodore McCarrick, at the time, Cardinal McCarrick. Supich responded 
And he said that he was actually, back in the day, congratulated by Vigano. I don't know what the true story is. Um, and then there's also the famous quote by Supic um, when he said, this is this is pretty interesting quote, Cardinal Supic, quote, the, the Pope has a bigger agenda. He's got to get on with other things of talking about the environment and protecting migrants and carrying on the work of the church. We're not going to go down a rabbit hole on this. That was regarding Vigano, McCarrick, and all that. So he thought the whole McCarrick Summer of Shame was a rabbit hole. We can't go down the rabbit hole, Supich says. I mean, we got to get on with things like talking about the environment, protecting migrants. So it's a disappointment. Now, I know some people, their response will be wrongly to say, the Catholic Church is defected. Check out orthodoxy, bro. I guess I can give up on Catholicism and Christianity and sleep in on Sunday, play golf, play video games, binge Netflix. But our Lord Jesus Christ, the lover and savior of mankind, promised to you and to me that there would be wolves in sheep clothing. There would be bad stewards. He called them bad, evil stewards. There would be bad shepherds and bad pastors. There would be false prophets. He prophesied this. He foretold it. You might even say he promised it. So how can we as Christians say there's wolves in sheep clothing? Christ must be false. No, Christ told you there would be wolves in sheep clothing. In fact, if you lived in a church that had no infiltrators, no wolves in sheep clothing, no false prophets trying to get in, you might have to conclude that that's not actually the sheepfold of Christ. It's not the true church. Because it will be under attack. And St. Paul says that in the end times, there will be a great apostasy. Even Christ, our Lord and Savior, says that when he returns, will he find faith. For the sake of the elect, it will be shortened. Then if you want to go into private revelation, maybe you can look at Our Lady of La Salette, Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady of Akita. You have the language of the church being in eclipse. Perhaps even the idea that the corruption of the church begins at the top and works down. And of course, all you have to do is read a little bit of church history, particularly in the 1500s, 1600s, 1700s, even before that. Corrupt cardinals. Cardinals in it for the wrong reasons. The three wrong reasons that infect all power structures. My grandpa, God rest his soul, used to say that men, humans, fall from sex, money, and power. And he's told me, this is pretty insightful actually, men in their 20s usually fall to sex. Men in their 30s usually fall to money. And men in their 40s and older usually fall to power. Although I've seen it all jumbled up before. Even my wife yesterday was talking, we were talking about corruption in the church. She's like, why? Why are these people, even, if they want this, why are they even in the church? She said, babe, it's all about sex, money, power. Look at ex-Cardinal McCarrick. What was it about? Sex, money, power. What do we do about it? I know a lot of you want me to lead a crusade against the Archdiocese of Chicago but I'm not. I live in Texas. But you know already, if you've watched my podcast for all these years, you know what I'm going to say next. I'm going to say, wait for it, pray the rosary every day, that's your weapon. And you got to migrate and find a traditional Latin mass 
If you're a Roman rite, find a Latin mass. If you're Eastern, go to find a good liturgy of St. John Chrysostom. And you take your money with you. You vote with your feet, the great Catholic migration. And that might mean you have to move dioceses. It might mean you have to move states. It might mean you have to move nations. Especially if you have children. Your children need good liturgy, holy liturgy, orthodox liturgy, reverent. And I'm not talking about how much lace is on the altar and on the men. I'm talking about the prayers, the devotion, the preaching, the solemnity, and the actual text of the traditional Roman rite. Not the stuff that was written on a napkin in Trastevere. The stuff that was developed in the hearts of saints and popes over 1,600 years. The traditional Latin Mass. The Mass of the Ages. You got to find that. You got to migrate. And then you're going to take your money in your free time, in your volunteer time, and you're going to invest that in communities and in priests and in parishes where they want to do the same thing, which is restore the Roman rite, but not just for the sake of the Roman rite, but to restore all things in Christ, as Pope Pius X had on his motto, restore, which has come from St. Paul in Scripture, who was inspired by the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. Restore all things in Christ. I want to go to heaven. I want my wife to go to heaven. I want our eight children to go to heaven. I want you right now watching to go to heaven. And I want you to be a great saint. And I'd be happy if you sit up higher than me and you're holier than me. Let's just get there. Don't aim for purgatory. You'll end up in hell. Aim to be a saint. How do you do that? When you wake up, you get on your knees and pray. You dedicate and consecrate the day to Jesus. You read the Bible every day. Read the Psalms. Fast at least once a week. Abstain from meat on Fridays, maybe even on Wednesdays if you can. Say no. There's a great quote from an Eastern father that says, if you were going to attack a city, siege a city, what would you do? You would cut off the food and the water of that city to make the people in there weak, and then you could take the city because the people would be starving. They'd have no food and water. And he says, it's the same thing with you, Christian. You cut off food and water and you make the passions weak so that you can overcome them for Christ and become a saint. Not to live according to your flesh, your emotions, your desires, your lusts, your passions, but to focus your mind on Christ and reorder and align all those desires, wants, and emotions. That's called being a saint, capital S, saint. So we got to pray the rosary, traditional liturgy, go to confession every two weeks, at least every month. If you have mortal sin, right away. Listen to good sermons, read good books, Again, if you're new to traditional Catholicism, not only should you find a traditional Latin Mass and read the Bible every day, which should be the Dewey Rames Bible. That's a translation. Dewey Rames. Dewey Rames. Not King James. That's bad. Dewey Rames. I need a t-shirt. No King James, only Dewey Rames. You need to read a good catechism. Catechism of Council of Trent. Read it. It's this thick. You can do it. Read it. Pray the rosary every day, every night. If you're a dad, you should be... Shame on you, dads, if you're not leading your family in the rosary. You're just wrong. You are expected to do this. It is basic, fundamental Catholicism, dads. Wives, are you hearing this right now? Forward this video to your husband. Say, I'd really like you to listen. You don't have to say what, what you want him to hear, but he needs to hear... He needs to get the beads out and lead the family in the rosary. Got all these kids confused. They don't know what they are anymore. The little kids, they don't know. Middle school, high school, they think they're all kinds. Of, they think they're a, 
a, a female cat or if they're a boy or whatever. I don't even know what's going on. That's because we've lost solid, sacred male fatherhood in the church and in the homes. Dads, be men, be the oak, be the foundation, and lead your family spiritually. And the way you can, you don't have to preach a sermon or get all sentimental or cry in front of your family or about Jesus or anything. You don't have to do any of that. Just get the beads out and say, hey, we're praying the rosary. Oh, dad, we want to watch a TV show. No, you're not watching the TV show. We want to eat food. No, we want to go play outside. Well, you can't. We're going to pray the rosary right now. In 20 minutes, you can get back on that. That's what we're doing. That's what we need dads to do. All right. If you like this video, like it. Share it on Facebook. You are my algorithm. No one cares about a guy talking about rosaries and Hail Marys and St. Michael prayers. So share it on Facebook so people see it. Subscribe to this channel, YouTube. Um, this channel is on Spotify. You can listen to it audio on Spotify, on iTunes, on Stitcher. And I've heard that today or tomorrow it will also be available on Audible and Amazon Music. So you can listen to it there. You just search my name, taylormarshall.com. If you would like to get signed autograph books, I've written nine books. I'm looking for one. Well, here's one of them. Signed copy of Infiltration. If you want a signed copy of my book, Rosary in 50 Pages. Signed copy of my book, um, Catholic Perspective on Paul. Signed copy of Thomas Aquinas in 50 Pages. All this stuff, you go to patreon.com forward slash dr taylor marshall you can support this show it's the tip jar and uh there's different levels of supporting the show but you can get free stuff online courses signed books merch t-shirts coffee mugs and i am i already said pray the rosary every day uh i'm giving away two heirloom quality rosaries produced by seraphim and they're absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to put them on the screen. One is white and one is black. Where are you, rosaries? Here they are. I've got them actually right here in front of me. Araceli sent them to me. I'm a guy. I'm not big into white Bibles, white rosaries, but this thing is awesome. It's got Our Lady of Fatima talking to the three children right there in the, in the middle piece. This thing is heavy. You could rescue a small child out of a pit with this rosary. Uh, I mean, this is this is like what you would give someone when they get married. Like when my daughter gets married, she's getting one of these. Uh, actually, my wife and I, my wife's sister just had a baby. She gets one of these. The male one that I'm giving away is black. And it's heavy duty. Look at this thing. It's got St. Juniper Sarah right there. It's solid. Look at this. It's a weapon. I think I told the story. I was traveling with a rosary by Seraphim. And I was in the airport and I got pulled aside and had to wait until they came. They wanted to search through my backpack at the airport. And they pulled out one of these big rosaries by Seraphim. And they looked at it and I said, okay, you can go. And I said, why did you, did you stop me for that? That rosary? And they said, yeah, we, we had to flag you because of that. And I said, well, why did you stop me for a rosary? I thought there was going to be some discrimination up in here. And the guy said, well, we thought it was a weapon. And I said, that's because it is a weapon, buddy. You weren't wrong. I didn't say that because then I would have got in big trouble. I just smiled and thought to myself, I can't wait next time I'm on a podcast to tell that story. That the guy said, we thought your rosary was a weapon. Because it is. All right, if you want to be in the drawing to win the white one for a female, there'll be two names drawn on September 8th, Nativity of Our Lady. The white one for the ladies, the black one will go to a male. Uh, go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. That's a show. We're going to pray a Hail Mary for Cardinal Blaze Supich. I feel bad. I have a son named Blaze. Every time I say Cardinal Blaze Supich, I get a little... So pray the rosary, 
maybe give a decade to Cardinal Blaise Supic. And now we're going to pray the Hail Mary for Cardinal Blaise Supic. Oremus nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc tor mortis nostre. Amen. Sancte Blasie, or pro nobis, nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, friends, God bless you. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless you. Have a happy and penitential Friday and a great weekend. God bless.